Hi guys, welcome to a new series of uh, airbrushing videos I plan on doing. Uh, hopefully it will be informative to you all. I'm going to start from the very beginning. I'm going to take you on a long journey of do's, don'ts, whys, maybes, ifs, buts, you name it. Today I'm going to start with a very basic airbrush, but I've got to say guys, I am seriously impressed with it. It's the Iwata HP-M1 with a 1.5mm cup. Most important thing to note about this airbrush, it's single action. I appreciate there can be, for people who have never used an airbrush before, quite a, a bit of fear surrounding them. Hopefully by the time I've finished I'm going to take that away. So let's crack this baby open and take a look. OK guys, so what do you get in the box? Well, you're looking at it. You get a spanner for the little nib and the airbrush itself. I've got to say it's it's a really nicely crafted piece of kit, it really is uh, solid and it's got some weight to it as well. Anyway, one and a half mil cup as you can see, and I, I keep having to resist the urge to pull back on, on this lever because like I say, it's single action only. And on the rear of it you have this adjustable knurled knob. Now, what that means is essentially, you depress the trigger, it will jet air out at whatever chosen PC, uh, PSI of your uh, compressor and you control the paint flow by this rather unique knurled knob at the back as you can see it's numbered as well so you can make your own notes literally as you're spraying say like if you were spraying a large cone you have maybe at, at about four and then when you want to move into something that's closer you'd move it down to two and then if you wanted to go back again you could just remember you need to turn it back to four and now for the moment we're going to close that off so I'm going to briefly dismantle this, show you how simple it is, and then we're going to put it into practice, guys. So on the front end, you have your little cone there. What I'm going to do first, I'm going to screw out the needle. It's literally just screws in like that, guys. Slide it out. Place it to one side. Okay. Lift the trigger mechanism out. Nothing to that. Take off the front cone and this section here it's all just screw on finger tight that's all you need to do okay and that will reveal the little nib that's where this little spanner comes in and where we make it's very loose because you know you don't over tighten these things and there's your little nib plunk that down there and you know what guys that's as much as you need to do this section here, which is just the uh, valve which connects to your compressor, as you can see it's got a knurled sort of like nut there, you can get a spanner and take that off if you wish, but there's absolutely no need whatsoever to remove it. None at all. That's it. How simple is that guys? So I'm just going to, hopefully, if I can see, screw, bear with me guys, because I've got a tripod stuck in front of me and it's not easy, there we go. I'll just screw that in, finger tight, and I'm just going to give it a little nip with the spanner. There we go. Put that back in position. Screw this section back on. And the little cone at the front. Pop the lid on there out of the way. All that's left to do now is to replace the needle. Now when you look at the trigger here, as you can see there's a little channel cut out of it. Obviously that's where the needle travels through. So locate it back into your airbrush. Now I don't know if you'll see this on camera. Oh yes you can, just about. You see the little channel there? So I'm going to depress that just a fraction, making sure that that channel's in the middle. Feed the needle through gently. You'll find the location. There you go and just screw that baby back in. That's all there is to it guys. How simple is that? No fear, very simple operation. Now before I actually show you the practical side of this, what I will point out is, you predetermine your PSI, I would generally be running at about 20, okay? So when you depress, all you're gonna have happen is some air come out. Now for paint flow, then you will start to turn this knurled nut backwards and then you will see as you depress the air the paint will start to come out 
and it can come out really fine as well. Now if I just check, yes it's 0.3 needle size, a good all rounder size for the most airbrushing purposes. If you want a larger cone, you'd release more at the back, maybe pull back on the airbrush. But you know what? Enough waffling guys. I'm not going to sit there and sing the praises of this airbrush without showing you in actual action. So let's move on to the uh, airbrushing table and I'll show you what this bad boy can do. Okay then, so I've got my model ready. Um, tripod in front of me guys, so please bear in mind I may accidentally knock it, but I've connected the uh, Awata HP M1 now, all ready to go. And what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be using uh, Vallejo Polyurethane Surface Primer Grey for the job. So, take the cup off. Now, only mind guys, my compressor may kick in at some point, so you'll have to bear with me for the noise. So, I'm just adding some spray to the thing. I'm going to put the cup back on now because hopefully I don't want it to go everywhere. Like I say, single action, so nothing's been released at the time. So what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to press the trigger and I'm going to slowly turn the release paint knob at the back. There we go. Okay, I've determined how much paint's coming out. And I'm going to go ahead, let's give that a little bit more. Beautiful. Perfect even coverage. Let me give it a little bit more. Even better. Lovely smooth action on it, I gotta say guys. Quite impressive. Sometimes if you have them you know, any airbrush releasing paint too quickly, you're actually wasting paint because it's blasting it everywhere. And you're not really sort of like being very economical with your paint. Effortless this is guys, totally effortless. Bearing in mind as well that the polyurethane is really quite a thick primer it's very thick indeed as you can see I'm, I always undercoat or prime for want of a better word the bottom part of the uh, model first so I can just turn it round at will stand it on its legs I've got to say guys this is a fantastic little tool for the job I've just released a little bit more paint for speed. So those of you out there that want to get it done quicker, you will be able to. Beautiful. Well, I'm not going to bore you with the rest of this guys, I'm going to carry on and I'll come back when I've uh, finished it. Okay guys, so I've done that and it's dry now and I've got to say it's giving it a lovely smooth even coat. I, I can't argue with that, that's brilliant. Now what I'm going to do now is go on to the second stage of adding my armour colour. Uh, next, this is what I generally do when I do the walls, I'm going to use uh, Vallejo Model Air now, German Grey making sure that the adjuster, paint adjuster at the back is set to zero. I'm going to add some uh, paint to the cup. Apologies guys, don't forget the um, compressor may kick in, it might get a bit noisy. Okay, it's still set at 20 psi, incidentally it was at 20 psi previously for the Vallejo polyurethane as well. And now what I'll do is get this on camera. I'm going to test my flow, so I'm going to slowly release. There we go. You see it coming out, guys? I can have a fair amount of paint coming through on this because basically all I'm going to do now is go over the entire model once again, as I did 
with the um, primer. No problems coming out at all. Lovely. If you want a wider cone, just pull it back, release a bit more paint. There you go. Fantastic. Nothing could be simpler. Actually, I've just sprayed the engine now, and I thought, what, I, what am I doing? I'm only actually spraying the armor sections on this now, so I'm going to go ahead and do this off camera, and I'll be back, guys. Okay then guys, so I've gone over the whole model in that second colour now. Um, it takes quite a while because it's quite a, you know, a large lengthy model. Let's just zoom this out a little bit. There we go. Um, but as you can see, it's all done, all the areas that I want. Now I'm going to go on to the fun bit because that's a boring bit, just spraying colour all over. Now I'm going to start shading some of the panels. So I've got my next colour on ready, which is the Vallejo Model A USA Grey. Uh, incidentally, when you're spraying a model as large as this, uh, with all airbrushes, you're going to get some paint that dries on the nib. There's nothing simpler with this. Um, I generally, what I generally do after I've used a couple of cupfuls, I'll just give it a run through under some uh, warm water. Uh, just basically move in and out the uh, knob at the back, and that will release any paint that may have built up on the needle. And then away you're, you're ready to go again. So. Without further ado, it's actually closed at the moment, okay? Still on 20 PSI because it seems to be working well for me at the moment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put some the next colour in the cup. Now just spraying on the table first. Sorry guys, not the camera. I'm going to release, or rather turn the knob at the back. Till I'm happy with the level of paint coming out. That seems to be okay. Let's, let's give it a whirl. So, make sure I'm one shot. That's a little bit too much. And that's okay, but what I'm going to do, guys, I'm actually going to drop my PSI to about 15 and open up the chamber. That's better. Yeah, that's much better. Increase the amount of paint a little. Fantastic. See, I've pretty much found the PSI. I keep knocking the tripod, guys. And the amount of flow that I want to come out of the uh, airbrush. So, I can effectively now do all of the panel lines on this model with the uh, setting that I've just done. working like a dream guys fantastic alright so if you've all been rather bored to death I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of this model and we'll be back ok then so that's completed that and I've managed to go over the entire model with perfect ease I must say even the marine sat in the cockpit, shading on the pauldrons and the head. Overall, brilliant. Now I'm going for the final stage of the armor colour, and probably the most critical. I'll be using uh, pale grey blue from Vallejo Model Air. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go for the setup stage of the airbrush. So I'm going to apply some paint in the cup. Gonna test the flow firstly on the table. So let me just move the model out of the way. There you go, guys. 
you know how I like to knock the tripod. So, slowly depress. There goes the compressor. Okay. There's a very faint flow coming out there, which is exactly what I want. And it's set at something like 15 psi. And I'm just going to, there we go, brilliant. Excellent. Not getting too close because I want a nice dispersal of this final highlight colour. That's exactly how I want it to look. Could really do with a new compressor. One that doesn't kick in every two seconds. But, uh, that'll do. So, look at that guys. No problems at all. So it's just a matter of altering the PSI and the paint flow at the back end of the airbrush. And it's absolutely perfect. Let's just finish this wing off. No problems, look guys, no problems at all. I'm going to go over the rest of the model now guys, and I'll be back. There it is guys, all done. I've got to say, that was a really easy job to do with this airbrush. I've had virtually no problems whatsoever. The only thing, like I say, and you get it with just about every airbrush you use, when you're spraying something for a long time, you will get some paint dry on the uh, needle. But like I say, a quick, a quick run under the uh, tap and you know what, problem sorted. So what I'm going to do now, just to finish off, which is what I always do on a model, I'm going to give it a gloss varnish because it's part of my weathering process. I'm going to be using the layout, get it, acrylic gloss, very thick it is, but as you can see guys, just a minor adjustment on the knob here. This baby will spray out just about anything that you put in it. It really will. Seriously impressed I am. I've been able to get into all the small details, even on the marine there. You can see all the different shades and so forth. I've had absolutely no problem. It's an absolute dream to use. So I'm just going to go off camera, guys, so I don't get any gloss varnish on my lens, and I'll be back. Okay then, guys, so there it is. It's all complete. All of the armour colour has been done. The gloss varnish, it's all ready for the uh, next stages that I would do normally in painting a model like this. But who would have thought it? Such a superb little gem of an airbrush such as this would be able to achieve all of the effects that I would normally be doing with the most minimalistic of fuss, I've got to say. Clean out was absolutely simple. Just like I say, as I described in the um, dismantling earlier, just take the needle out, run it through with some airbrush cleaner or warm water or whatever it is you generally do use and you're, you're good to go. Perfectly controllable through P, uh, PSI and of course the uh, adjuster knob at the back. Couldn't be any simpler guys. Fully endorse it. I'm definitely going to be keeping this in my toolbox because I'm so impressed with it. Small, compact, fantastic. Veowata HP-M1. Don't forget to check out the links in the description guys as where you can purchase yours from if you're so inclined or interested. And cheers for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.